Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. Now this episode is about a wonderful train I had a ride on when I was in Australia. It's located just outside the small but very fashionable coastal town of Byron Bay. And as you will see, it's exclusively powered by the sun. I just want to know how you came up with the notion of making a solar powered train. I mean, what, what sparked the whole thing off? Yeah, well, this, this particular project is on a three kilometre flat section of track, right? right? So that's a great starting point. It's a controlled environment. And then also the platforms, which we're standing under now, also have a lot of spare roof area. So after we got the project going and um, sort of about two years ago, we, we thought the technology was there to do it. And we assembled a team of experts and engineers in different um, disciplines and uh, we've managed to be able to power this train right. using solar power purely. Right. So what happens then is it's, I mean obviously I can see there's solar panels on the roof of the train but that's not the only source that, and then there's batteries in the train, is that right? Yeah, that's right. correct. So this is a, it's a heritage train, it was built right. in 1949 after right. the Second World War. Um, it's actually known as one of the lighter trains, it's got an aluminium body. Right. Um, and so that helped as well. And um, traditionally, we got two carriages here. One carriage has two, would have had two diesel engines in it. Wow. And the other one's a trailer car. But you can drive it from both ends. Right. And so what we managed to do was we took one of the uh, diesel engines out and we've replaced that with quite a large lithium ion battery bank right. and a uh, whole new transmission and um, all of the componentry to go with that driven from um, an electric charge. Right. And so uh, we're capturing the sun off the roof of the train as well as on the platform and the combined energy there then charges the batteries and we use that to, to drive the train. train. At this end, you can get to a beach, yeah. and at that end is sort of the town. Right in the middle of town, yeah. essentially, yeah. But over here as well, we have a lot of new development going on. Right. The resort, uh, we've got what we call the Arts and Industry Estate, which is yeah. the major employment hub in Byron. Yeah. So we've got a lot of people moving back and forth, um, and I think this, as this area develops and, and, and evolves, um, it's going to be really convenient to get right. in and out of town. Plus, yeah. the traffic's pretty bad. The traffic's appalling. So this is another option. Yeah, you don't have to park. You can yeah. go on the train. Exactly. You don't have to park. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. Exactly. I think this is the world's only. Well, yeah, that's what. 100% solar-powered train, which is fantastic. Yeah, and and actually. Um, Last year, we, we exported back into the grid nearly 60,000 kilowatt hours, which is enough to power 12 uh, residential three-bedroom yeah. houses yeah. on top of the energy oh, yeah. that we oh. used. Right. So right. it's definitely net carbon positive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, we, uh, we haven't missed a service in the first 12 months, so we're running, um, you know, 14 trips, 14 to 18 trips a day. Right. And I, I know just one of the things, I don't know if you know the fact that all the figures of that, but a lot of people would be intrigued by the size of the battery in terms of kilowatt hour storage you know what it 77 kilowatt hours 77 kilowatt yeah, hours yeah. and and it's a 70 ton train let's remember wow. that so we're not moving a car no but um you know the 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 massive torque is perfect for moving a big yeah. big weight like that and um the fact that we've got a flat track and it's straight right and it's back and forth really helps yeah. um, because you know pushing this thing up a hill is a whole different story. Quite the yeah. But I mean, once you get a train moving, it's like the, the friction, like the, the tire, the, the, you don't the have momentum. tire friction. Yeah, the momentum yeah. is very. It's uh, yeah, it's steel on steel. Yeah. So we'll accelerate out of the platform, and she'll pretty much coast half the way. Right. Then we give it a little bit more juice, just to get to the end, and then we're there. Right. Yeah. And then so we've got the regen braking as well. Yeah. So recovering oh, oh, really? some of that. You do get. Yeah, you absolutely. Do, you've yeah. got regen. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Wow. Yeah. So um, you know, she's pretty efficient. I think. A return trip uh, which is six kilometers we use maybe five kilowatt hours yeah I'm about the same as a really efficient small electric car yeah, it's <laughs> and it's a 70 ton and we can carry 100 passengers yeah, yeah. wow wow amazing so Nick I just want to say for starters so delightful to ride on this train. It's so quiet. Isn't it beautiful? The start off is amazing, amazingly smooth. But also, just to be able to sit on the train, have your arm out the window, it's just <laughs> lovely. You can't do that in the UK. So, what was your involvement then in the project? What what, what Brit did you bring to the yeah, party? So Jeremy got me involved when there was a vision to convert from diesel to a solar electric drivetrain. We started exploring what energy requirements that would take um, to do that. We wanted had a vision that it had to be completely solar powered and not be drawing energy from outside sources. So yeah. we did some calculations. I, I brought on a, a friend, um, 
Brett uh, Sutherland and from El Mofo, and we had a look at then the electric drive um, requirements to accelerate a train of yeah. 70 tonnes yeah. and what, what that's going to need. We um, looked at Parker Motors from the US and right. calculations with the Parker team worked out what energy draw it's going to take right. and, and then built a solar array around that. Wow. Because, yeah. I mean, I think the thing that really caught my eye when I first saw it was the solar panels on the roof of the train, which I think we should explain to people that isn't the sole source of its solar energy, is it? But That's it, it right. Yeah, keeps so it topped up all day. There's two solar arrays. One's the main 30 kilowatt array on the platform. Right. Uh, and that does the bulk of the work. And when the plane's at the northern end of its run, it can right. plug in and top up right. in a traditional plug in like a car. Oh, like right. A car. Um, but then we've also got the um, really unique technology on the roof of this train. It was a uh, brand new technology when we were first investigating what options there were. So it comes from Dr. Xi's new product, um, Sunman. Uh, so he was the man behind SunTech and right. you know the Sun God, one of the early innovators in sun, uh, solar technology. Uh, and then he's come out with a new product for a flexible panel. So it's because right, they curved around the, the, yeah. the shape of the roof. Right. When we were looking at the design options, we looked at a flyover roof, and, right. and that would have ruined the heritage feel of the train. So then we were looking for something more included into the form yeah. factor of this train. And so it needed to be moulded and followed the lovely curves of the old, old design. And then this product allows that. So it's a full crystalline silicon cells. Uh, but in an encapsulation, um, similar polycarbonate to the windows on an aeroplane. Right. So tough, really but tough. it allows that flexibility just enough to follow the factor uh, form right. of the strain. And we're getting great um, output though, so <clears throat> same efficiencies as the standard panel. Wow. So some of the um, flexible panels have, have, don't have the same yeah. efficiency offering, but yeah. we're able to get the best of both worlds. So what have you got on the roof? It's uh, over six kilowatts. Yeah, six there? and a half kilowatts right. of solar. It's very long. Right. There's a lot of obstacles on the old roof. So you know, I was up there myself a couple right. of years ago, walking along the roof, measuring right. out. Oh, so the there's other bits that are sticking yeah, out. Yeah, there's old the gas pipelines right. and vents of all sorts. Yeah. So yeah. that was fun, just mapping the roof, Fit measuring out each yeah. of it, and then fitting the panels in around that. But then that's going through an inverter then directly into the battery. In that's the right, yeah. So we had to get bespoke solar controller uh, made in China in the end, a uh, great partner there. And that's feeding straight into the 410 volt battery bank, yeah. Oh, look, we're going over a level crossing. So <laughs> I'm just going to wave. Oh, friendly wave. <laughs> I mean, I think this is a really good example of that. Of there, there are bits of track all over the world that are ideally suited to this sort of technology, where there are either no longer trains running or they're on diesel, which just go for goodness' sake, we've got to move on from that. And you know, it's quite interesting that it's converting. This, this already existed. No one had to make this. This was made just after the war. You know, it's such a brilliant to be able to use this. Reuse this beautiful yeah. technology, and yeah. it's quite a simple conversion process, really. Right. It's. You know, once you've gone through it once, it's easy to replicate, I feel. Yeah. So, you know, we're just on holidays in uh, Brazil at the Agazu Falls, and there's a train on the Argentinian side that runs uh, the tourists, and right. there's a lot of tourists go to that side. Yeah. I just think this is such a natural, we're in yeah. this beautiful and natural environment. Yeah. Why have we got a little diesel it's clunker? It's a diesel train. train. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. 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 So and they've got to see a, this And also, course. you know, apart from anything else, they've got to ship that fuel to wherever the station is in some way. Yeah, that's right. All instead of making it there themselves. Yeah. I mean, yeah, all, all those the logistics behind the oil. Yeah. Is, mess yeah. yeah so no I mean it is it is I mean I know it's a you know in a way it's a well, it feels like we've been quite gone quite a long way but it's only a short it's a limited run that we're, we're doing on this yeah one. it's only a short three and a half kilometer yeah. run from yeah. uh, out of the resort into town but right. it's yeah. beautiful we go through some nice waterways yeah no it's beautiful yeah no it's, it is fabulous oh well congratulations on getting it going and I mean I, I, I'm, I'm hoping it's is it popular I mean is it in the height yeah. the height of the season yeah. I imagine there's a lot of people using yeah it's been used a lot for festivals too the, right. the resort at the other end um, has festivals regularly right. so they put on more services and the trains had a hundred percent zero breakdown yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, so it's very reliable yeah. yeah no it's proved its reliability which is fantastic well, that's all we've got time for. I'd like to offer very special thanks to all the folks from the Byron Bay Railroad Company for making this episode possible. They were very kind. Please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a look at that little Patreon link beneath this video. Patreon is what makes this show possible. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.